Okay, welcome back Science Tens to our next lesson in physics and in chapter six, this is 6.4 and today we're looking at calculating energy. Okay, so now that we know what energy is, we can start to calculate it. I know, using math and science is your favorite thing. So let's get into it. Okay, so first calculating kinetic energy. Kinetic energy, again, is energy of movement and it's proportional to mass and velocity. You can kind of think of this as what would hurt more to get hit by. So say we have a tennis ball, would it hurt more if it was going slowly towards you or if it was going really fast? If it's going really fast, it has more energy and it's gonna hurt more when you get hit. So as velocity goes up, energy goes up. Now how much it's going to hurt also has to do with mass. Getting hit with something like this, going at something like 10 meters per second, isn't gonna hurt like getting hit by something like this going at 10 meters per second. This has a lot more mass and it's got a lot more energy. And so this is the formula for it here. It's EK, which means energy kinetic, kinetic is equal to half, so 0 0.5 in your calculator, MV squared. The M stands for mass, and this has to be measured in kilograms and velocity has to be measured in meters per second. That's what the V is, velocity, and it's measured in meters per second. Okay, put the units in for those. The unit for energy, which we talked about before in work, is joules, all right? Now, a joule is basically a, just a summary of different units. When we look at this equation, we go half times M times V squared. If we look at the units, well, there's no unit to a half, but for mass is kilograms, and for velocity, it's meters per second. Now this is squared. So meters per second times meters per second is meters squared per second squared. Same thing that happens to those numbers happens to the units. So it's kilograms meters squared per second squared. And instead of writing that every time, we just said, well, that's gonna be equal to a joule. So that's why we're writing joules for energy, but it is the same as a kilogram meter squared per second squared. So let's look at some examples. The first one is the easiest one where you just plug in your numbers. So a 150 gram baseball is being thrown at 44 meters per second. How much kinetic energy does the baseball have? So we'll set up EK is equal to half MV squared. And now we just need to plug these numbers in. We're trying to solve for EK and it's rearranged for EK so we don't have to do any rearranging. EK is equal to half. Again, your calculator, I would put 0.5 times our mass. Now this is a little bit tricky because it said 150 grams, and we saw from the last slide, mass has to be in kilograms. It's important to remember. So how many kilograms for a gram? Well, there's 1,000 grams in a kilogram. So we take 150 out of 1,000 and it's 0 0.150 kilograms. That's important. And then next, the ball is thrown at 44 meters per second. Another place where students often make the mistake is they just go times 44 meters per second, put in their calculator. Don't forget to square this number. That will affect your answer a lot. We put those all into the calculator and you should get a number of 145.2 and energy is measured in joules. Now we have to look at our significant digits and there was three in 150, but only two in our meters per second. So we need to round to two. This is around a 15, but uh, it's bigger than that. So we need to use scientific notation. 1.5 times 10 to the two joules would be our final answer. Now let's look at one that's a little bit more complex. It says a 80 kilogram person is running with 1.2 kilojoules of kinetic energy. How fast are they running? Okay, but we're talking about kinetic energy. So let's say EK is equal to half MV squared. But this one is not asking for the kinetic energy. It's asking for the velocity. So now we have to do some rearranging of this equation. So I like to circle what I'm trying to rearrange for. And I have to move everything away from that. Remember, it's the reverse order of bed mass that I move everything away. So we look for any addition subtraction. Don't see any of that. We're all good. Next, division multiplication. Well, this half and m are both being multiplied by v squared, so I have to undo those next. I'm gonna start with the half. Since this is a half times mv squared, you could divide by a half. But as you see how the half is written there is like one over two, taking the half of something is like dividing something by two. So you could also times it by two. Both of these options are fine. Divide by a half or times by two are the same thing. I find it easiest to times by two. So I'm gonna write times two, and that crosses out that half. 
and then I write a 2 over here. So 2ek is equal to mv squared. Next, to get rid of the m, m is being multiplied by v squared, so the opposite is to divide by m, cancels, and I divide over here. What I have now, all this is cancelled out, so I have 2 times energy kinetic divided by mass it gives me v squared. I finished all the division multiplication, multiplication. Now I go to the exponents. And how I undo that square is I take the square root. Now I took the square root of this whole side. Everything over there is just v to cancel out the square. So I have to take the square root of this entire side as well. And this is my new equation. So filling in the numbers here, I have two times my 1.2 kilojoules. This is kind of another complication that the question throws at us. It's not 1.2 joules, that's kilojoules, which means 1,000 joules. And this equation is using joules. So I need to times that by 1,000 and put 1,200 joules. So be careful with the units there. Then I divide by my mass, which is 80 kilograms. Fortunately, that is the right unit. Once I've done all that, I take the square root, okay? Let's go to the calculator to show you how to put this in. So we'll take 2 times 1,200, and I would get my answer there as the numerator being 2,400. Then I'm going to divide by the mass of 80, get our answer of 30, and the last step is to take the square root. So I go second square and second answer, this is my answer from before, and is 5.477. Okay, so now we round that. There was two digits in the 80, two in the 1.2, so I'm going to round to two significant digits. This becomes 5.5, and our units here are meters per second, and we're done right there. Okay, so next we're going to calculate potential energy. There is gravitational, chemical, and elastic. We are only going to be calculating gravitational. And gravitational potential energy is proportional to how heavy something is, mass, gravity, and height. So we can think of this as how much work it takes to lift something. If you take something light and you lift it a small distance, it's not very hard. But if you take something heavy and lift it a high distance, that's much more difficult. So the height it gets raised and the mass of this object affect how much energy it has when it gets raised up or how much work it takes to change its energy. The other factor is gravity, how much gravity is pulling it down towards the Earth. This is consistent when we're on Earth, but it would be different on different planets. Okay, so just looking at the equation, EP stands for energy potential, or potential energy. And then we have M, which is going to be mass measured in kilograms. Then we have G. This G, we're going to assume we're on Earth. On Earth, the acceleration of gravity, which this G stands for, is 9.81 meters per second squared. All right, again, on other planets would be different, but if we're on Earth, it's 9.81 meters per second squared on the surface of Earth. And height, how high you raise it off of the surface, is going to be measured in meters. So this is height, and it's measured in meters. All right, now I want to show how the units work out in this case. If we have kilograms times by g, which is 9.81 meters per second squared, times by height, which is meters, well, this is the same as kilograms meters times meters is meters squared divided by seconds squared. This is the same unit we had before, and this is the unit that we called a joule. So this one works out as well that we are calculating energy in joules. We just have a different formula here for potential energy rather than kinetic. So let's try an example here. It says that an athlete does 1,275 joules of work on a mass while squatting at 1.3 meters. How much mass did the athlete lift? So the uh, athletes like this with their weights, and they lift it up to this position. Okay. So first thing we notice, it says 1,275 joules of work. We have to remember that work is equal to a change in energy. So that's the potential energy that it's gaining as it goes up. And it's important to note that we are just focused on the change in energy. Where we call potential energy to be zero, we can kind of choose on our own. We're only interested for how much potential energy it gains or loses. So really when we write EP, is equal to mgh, we could write change in height will give us a change in potential energy. It doesn't really matter where we start, it just matters the change. So for example, imagine this is like a building or an apartment or something like that, and there's 20 kilograms inside, and we lift this 20 kilograms up. At the ground, we say it started with no potential energy, and then we lift it up, maybe it has 120 joules. 
That's how much energy changed, 120 joules. It wouldn't really be different if this was on the second story. The amount of work you have to put in to lift that doesn't really matter if it's on the first story or the second, it still takes the same amount of work to change. It's at a higher place, but that change is really what we're focused on, where it starts and where it ends. So focus on those two things, call the bottom for where it starts zero joules and where it's at the top to be the place where it has the most joules. So following that line of thinking, we're gonna say at the start, it has zero joules of energy at that height, even though it's not on the ground, it's the lowest point, so I'm gonna call that zero. And at this point where it's lifted, has 1,275 joules because 1,275 was the work done. That's how much its energy changed. So went from zero to 275, those are the easiest numbers to work with here. So that's what we're gonna use. It also tells us that this is 1.3 meters and now we can plug into this equation and solve. So we got to rearrange. I'm just going to simplify this to EP is equal to MGH, and we are solving for how much mass was lifted. So again, reverse order of bed mass, there's no addition, subtraction. Next is division multiplication. See the mass is being multiplied by gravity and by height. How are we going to do those? So I divide by gravity and height. So divide by G, divide by H, cancel out over here, and put them to the other side. Potential energy in joules is 1,275. Gravity is going to be 9.81 meters per second squared. And the height was 1.3 meters. Now, how we put this in our calculator is important. So we need to put brackets around the outside of what's on the denominator. Otherwise, if we just plug this directly in our calculator, it'll divide by 9.81, get our answer, and multiply by 1.3. So I'll show you the difference here in the calculator. So first off, this is what you don't want to do. You take 1,275 divided by 9.81 and times by 1.3. Then we get an answer of 168.96, but that is the incorrect answer because your calculator just followed it in that order. But we want to divide by the 9.81 times 1.3. So how we write this is 2 or 1,275 divided by, now I use brackets for this denominator, go 9.81 times 1.3. That's dividing by both of those numbers. I hit enter and that is the correct answer, 99.976. Now, if you don't like using brackets, you could also go 1,275 divided by 9.81, get your answer and then divide by the 1.3 and you should get the same answer of 99.976. So we write that as our answer. And then we look in the question, there was four digits there, two digits here. So we'll round our answer to two digits, which would be 100. But we have to write that as 1.0 times 10 to the two. Um, and this is kilograms for the mass. That would be our final answer. Okay, so I hope that video made sense for you. Take a look at the practice questions, give those a try, and I will see you in the next video.